Hello Internet! Welcome to a new episode Blender and 3D Printing. Today we will delve deeper into 3D modeling and explore the possibilities Blender offers for accurate modeling. Blender is a powerful tool for 3D design and animation. However, there are limitations in the area of precision modeling. Cut is all about precision and planning, while Blender focuses on the visual aspects. Especially in the current version of Blender, Blender offers a lot of help for precision modeling. This allows us to use numerous and powerful design and modeling functions to model 3D printed objects. During the session we will work on the following topics. Let's get into Blender Precision Modeling. So let's start with the first topic, change the unit of measurement system. We can configure the unit of measurement of the scene settings according to our wishes and set a suitable measurement system. This helps us to keep a simple overview of the model dimensions or to control model scales and to easily transfer model dimensions from technical drawings. Therefore we go into the properties panel, activate the scene settings tab, go into the unit section and change the measurement system. Changing the measurement unit will also change the scale. In my case, if I select millimeters, the unit scale will be 1.001. To save these settings, we can save this in the startup file. Go into the file menu, save startup file. We'll save those settings in the startup file and every time you restart Blender, the same unit measurement system settings will appear. Let's continue with the next topic. Configure the display grid. The display grid can be configured in the properties panel of the 3D view. The properties panel can be shown using the N key. Show up the properties panel. Go to the display settings. And change the scale to the same value as the unit scale value in your measurement settings. Set the lines value to an appropriate value. In my case, I'm, my printer platform has um, 210 millimeters in square, so I set this to 210. Now the display grid is 210 millimeters in square. Change to the top view and to the orthogonal perspective. So the grid size is one millimeter and the subgrid is a tenth of a millimeter. You can only see the subgrid in the orthogonal view and in the top and side views. For example, the side views and the top view. I'm in the top view and the orthogonal perspective. According to my display grid settings, the display grid has a side length of 1 mm by 1 mm. If I zoom deeper into the 3D scene, the subgrid will be displayed. The subgrid is displayed only when the magnification is large enough. The subgrid divides each cell in increments of 10 and is displayed only in the orthogonal perspective. In my case, the unit size of the subgrid is the tenth of a millimeter. So, back in the top view. If we select an object in our 3D scene, the 3D manipulator appears at the origin of the object. To constrain the movement of a selected object, we can use the 3D manipulator, selecting an axis and left click and track the arrow. To move the object in small steps, we can track with the left mouse button and use the shift key in addition. First select the arrow and then use the shift key in addition. Now we can move in very small steps very precisely. 
Instead of the shift key, we can also use the control key to move in steps of the underlying grid. First select the arrow of the 3D manipulator and in addition the control key. And now you step in increment sizes of the underlying grid. To absolutely position the object to the grid, you can use the absolute grid alignment in addition. Since Blender 2.76, it is possible to snap the object during the movement to the grid spacing. Therefore, you have to activate absolute grid alignment. Now, you can select the 3D manipulator in combination with the control key and you can see you can move in absolute grid units. The object will automatically snap to the grid cells. If you zoom out, the snapping will now use the standard grid spacing. The snapping to the grid works also in the edit mode. If you change to edit mode and change to vertex select mode, we can select the axis in combination with the control key and move in steps of the grid units. We can activate the snapping by default activating the grid alignment and the snap function and now the snapping is activated and we do not have to use the control key. Again here, if I zoom into the 3D scene, the subgrid appears in the orthogonal perspective and the subgrid is automatically used for grid alignment. Instead of moving the vertex with the mouse, I can activate the axis of the 3D manipulator and insert the value in the input box. This works also with one or more vertices for example, I'm selecting two vertices, select the axis and insert the value. Let's have a look onto the standard navigation tools in Blender. There are three transform manipulators available. The translate manipulator, the rotate manipulator and the scale manipulator. For example, the translate manipulator, select an axis, drag with the left mouse button, the movement is locked to the selected axis. Another alternative is to select the 3D manipulator and use the pop-up dialog in the two panel to insert the desired values. For example, I locked my movement to the X axis and now I can move the object two unit sizes, two millimeters to the right or two millimeters to the left. I can also use the X and Y axis and I can combine this with the Z axis. This works not only in the object mode, this works also in the edit mode. Let's select an individual vertex, activate the 3D manipulator and insert the value for the movement. Here we have the possibility to use the control or the shift 
and control key in combination with the left mouse button. Use the left mouse button to select the axis. Use the shift and control key, for example, to move the vertex in subgrid steps. Or just the control key alone, select the axis and in combination with the control key and move in grid units. Again here, if you want to, if you want the vertex to be snapped to absolute grid positions, activate the alignment function and now in combination with the control key, we can snap the vertex during the movement to an absolute grid position. Again, this also works with a subgrid. Select the direction, use the shift and control key in addition, and move the vertex on the locked axis. Now we can see that the vertex is really moved in subgrid sub -grid steps. Again, if I use any value in between, I have the alignment function activated. It snaps to absolute grid positions. In this case, subgrid positions. Also in the edit mode, you can activate a 3D manipulator and use the pop-up menu that appears in the toolbar panel to manually insert the movement. Don't forget to activate the axis if you want to move the object in multiple directions. The manual input works also with other manipulators. For example, select an edge. Activate the manipulator. Select the axis you want to use for rotation. And insert an angle. You can also rotate on multiple axes. You can also use the scale manipulator in the same way. Select and activate the scale manipulator. A pop-up dialog appears on the tool panel and now we can, for example, we select an edge and we will scale this on the y-axis. Unfortunately, the video has some length and I have to split the videos into individual parts. I think um, maybe two videos more. The idea behind this um, video series is to combine all the important points regarding the precision modeling together to use the best of both worlds, the cut approach and the blender design and modeling approach to model your 3D printing projects yeah, and get the best out of two worlds. So there is more to come. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate if you push the like button. I will add some information and links into the description of the video. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and uh, I will be happy to answer them. See you next time on the UML OAD channel.